So I feel like there are some parallels between ASMR on the one hand and granular synthesis on the other hand. They're both interested in complex sounds, exotic timbres, the placement of where things are in the stereo field, and sort of forgo typical notions of pitch or rhythm. And maybe the most important thing they share is a interest in how the sounds make the listener feel in the body. So a physiological reaction to the sound. And so at some point last year, I started doing this sort of thing on the electron digitact. Uh, one of the first things I did was simple. It was a sine wave on the left and on the right channel, slightly out of phase. <laughs> And then I did something a little bit more complex that is called quasi-synchronous granular synthesis. And we'll be going over that in quite a bit of detail in a little bit. So my main resource on this sort of thing has been this book, Microsound, by Curtis Rhodes. He's also written some journal articles. Uh, I think they're probably available online. I'll see if I can find some links, put that in the description. And today, instead of doing this sort of thing on the DigAttack, we're going to take a look at doing it on Electron's newest offering, the model samples. If we're going to do granular synthesis, we've got to make some grains, so let's dive into that. Okay, a grain is just a tiny burst of sound. It's somewhere in the ballpark of 10 milliseconds up to 100 milliseconds, and uh, that's not very long, so if you just had one grain, like a kind of a click, it wouldn't really do much. So granular synthesis is always talking about a multiplicity of these grains, a cloud of these grains that are spread across time, spread across frequency, and spread out in the stereo field as well. And the source of these grain sounds can be pretty much anything. It could be recorded, it could be a uh, sound from a analog synthesizer, or as in the case that we're looking at in this video, since this is the model samples, the grains are going to be samples, or they're going to be a part of a sample. So to be clear, what I'm going to do is make a single sample that has a set of distinct grains across it in time. And this sample is going to be mono and what we'll do later is use the stereo output from the model samples to kind of spread things around in left, right, and center. To do this, I'm going to be using the free software Audacity. So let's get to work on that. Okay, so I have a sample open in Audacity. This is just a mono recording of that ping pong ball rolling on the paper plate. And what I want to do is open a new Audacity file and just show you that you can add a new track. So there's a mono track and generate a second of silence. So to do that, this duration is set for one second. And so that's my sample area that I'm going to be working in. Then next I'm going to go back to the existing sample and I just want to pick a little area of it. I'm going to zoom in on that and think about what I was saying about the time scale. Um, this is about 100 milliseconds so really we're talking down in this range for 10 milliseconds. So let's just say something like this. And what I want to do is copy that and then go back to the other file, the empty file, and maybe over here near the end, I'm gonna paste that in. 
So it's just a little tiny thing, and I'm gonna go up to effects and amplify it. So you got kind of a little blip there, and so I'm gonna zoom on that and then back out some. That's what I'm working with. I'm gonna try to smooth that out by using the fade in effect on the front of it, and then I'm gonna use the fade out effect on the back of it. Now, this is uh, actually the ideal time to talk about different types of granular synthesis. I mentioned that the thing that I was playing on the Tick Attack was quasi-synchronous granular synthesis. Now, synchronous granular synthesis is actually something like this, where the, I can press shift and hit play, it's going to loop that. So we are looping that sample and getting a tone. So that looping is basically creating a wave train of this sample grain. I can change the frequency of that by just making the clip a little bit bigger and even lower. So just think for a moment about how I'm changing the pitch by actually changing the blank space here. So I'm not stretching the sample or anything like that or compressing it. And that is synchronous granular synthesis. And so the quasi-synchronous granular synthesis that we'll be doing on the model samples is going to have a variation in this looping range and that will give a variation in the pitch. And then I wanna show you that you can actually use Audacity itself. I'm gonna generate a tone I can choose the waveform, we'll say a uh, sawtooth, stick with uh, 440, and uh, then we're going to go ahead and hit OK on that. And if I zoom on that, you can see what it looks like. We'll back out a little bit. And let's just listen to that. And then here it is with a longer loop time. And so, at this point, I'm going to just throw in some grains and we'll look at the final result. Okay, so I've got sort of a motley assortment of grains here. It's uh, right around a second, uh, some tiny ones, uh, some noisy ones. These are some chirps. This is sort of a pure sine tone. This is a clip from a grandfather clock. This is more noise. So what we're gonna do, save the Audacity file, but you also, if you wanna use it, you can export it as a WAV file. And uh, then uh, we're gonna use the transfer software from Electron to put this sample onto the model samples device. Okay, so this is the electron transfer utility for a variety of their devices. And uh, what you need to do at first is just make sure that you have selected your device down here. And then you connect it. And I like to go to the Explore tab. Then uh, I've got a folder on the model samples called Grain Silo, which is appropriate for what we're doing. and. So this is on the computer, and you just drag it from one to the other, and you can see it down here. You can even play it. Okay, so that's it. We've transferred the sample to the device. Uh, we haven't had to worry about an audio interface because it's just a direct data transfer, and now we can leave the computer and go work with the model samples directly. Okay, so to start with, we're just going to work our way across the model samples. And I've put the sample that we made in Audacity over here on track one. So first, I think I'm going to pitch it down a little bit like an octave. Then I'm going to boost the decay up to about 110 so that we have something nice and long. Uh, I'm going to go with a sample start of five because that is where the first grain is. And that's a good point to mention that I have made a cheat sheet that has 
basically the starting position on the model samples for each of the grains that we built in Audacity. Then I'm going to set the sample length to somewhere around 20 and I'm going to turn the loop on and we can hear that now. And then I'm going to leave the filter cutoff at zero. I'm going to boost the resonance to something like say 50 because we will uh, be wanting to use the filter. And very important, going to turn the delay send up to max, turn the reverb send up to max, because those are sort of an important part of filling the space that we're making. And then I'm going to turn the uh, reverb size up to something like 117. We'll do a chance later on the trigs and then the delay time is one of the important things. I'm just going to leave it at the default of 33, but then I'm also going to press function and set the feedback to about 40. And I can't emphasize enough that for the protection of your ears, uh, be careful with the delay feedback setting and also with the filter resonance on this device and pretty much any device that has those parameters. Okay, and then the main way that what we're doing works is by setting up the LFO such that our wave is going to be the random. We can boost the multiplier up to times 32. And then the key for all of this is that I'm going to set the destination of the LFO to the length. And so by randomizing that length, that gives us the quasi-synchronous granular synthesis. And another important parameter is the depth of the LFO. I'm going to set it to 20. Okay, I'm going to hit the pad, see what we got. And a key point to make in all of this is about time scale. We've got sample time scale. We've got these grain time scales. We've got the LFO time scale. And you could make some super long sample that's got a ton of grains in it, but then you wouldn't have the precision on your sample length to really be able to access them or sort of jump around in a random fashion on those. I've come up with something see this whole exercise as sort of a jumping off point, a starting point for your own explorations. And then now what I'm going to do is copy the track one sound over into track two and into track three. I'm going to set up a left, center, and right using the same setup that we just did for each of those three tracks. Okay, so here we are on track one, and I'm going to start it because this actually becomes easier to do while the uh, pattern is running. I'm going to turn it into record. I'm going to plop down some tricks, but that would be very difficult to work with. So I'm going to use the chance. I've used chance so that it's unlikely for these trigs to trigger and it makes it easier just to focus on the one that you're interested in. So I'm just going to leave trig number one the way that it is, but I'm going to go over to trig number five and the power of doing that set of grains is that I can uh, not only use that first grain, but with my cheat sheet I can see, for example, say I want to use the saw pulse, it's up at 108. So then if I want to hear that, I'm going to turn the chance back up on that. And then I can just change the note value for that, say I want to drop it down a little bit. And then I can also, for example, uh, change the LFO multiplier, say I want to make it faster. Move on to the next string. I'll pitch this one up. And I'm also going to make this particular trick reverse. Since that, that has a pretty intense sound, I might, uh, at the end, uh, not give it as much weighting. So 
So in this sort of thing, you think about the overall density of the soundscape and the chance of each trig firing is part of that. But then also we'll have parameters like the delay time and the actual tempo that change the density as well. Now for the last trig in this track, I'm going to uh, one of the recorded sounds. Well, it's just sort of a sizzle. And I'm going to turn the uh, LFO multiplier down. Okay, and then if you sort of want to hear the intent of this track, I'm going to change the chance of these. Uh, I'm going to put, uh, have sort of the norm be around 9%. This one that's reversed a little bit makes 6. And then uh, boost these others to 9. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to run the pan of track one all the way to the left and then pan of track three all the way to the right and leave track two in the center. I'm going to put in more trigs, probably stagger the trigs on the center and then I'll do track three. I'm just going to fast forward through that. Okay, here we are. I've got track one, track two, track three loaded with trigs. They're low chance, so it's not going to be super dense. Don't want it to be. You let the reverb and the delay fill in. Then I've put some hits in here. T4 and T5 and T6. And this is a good time to point out that you can also use the retrigger. An example of that would be this. You get more of a tone. I have it cranked quite a bit up. Okay, and then to go through some of the performance side of this, um, I feel like some of your main tools in this are going to be the tempo, so I keep that active your delay time, and your cutoff for the track that you're working with. I'm going to wait for a trigger to happen and then modify the tempo and the delay time so you can hear the effect. So as you see, you can get quite a bit of uh, variation from what we got going here. I'm going to drop out of this and talk to you for just a second. So I feel like we've covered a lot of ground in this video. We made the grains in Audacity and we have deployed them onto the model samples. And this device has been fun to work with. It's got interesting features that seem well suited to this sort of project. I'm just going to play us out for a couple of minutes. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next one.